in Portland walking went to a philosophy meetup last night discussing finite and infinite games and played a very cool game um, called Super Question that I had some hand in devising um, by which we split the group there were about 12 of us into twos, into pairs. Each person came up with a few questions about the book or about the concepts within the book. And then each pair worked to merge their questions creatively into kind of a meta or super question. Once you established uh, that meta or super question, pairs then paired with other pairs uh, and grouped into fours and work to merge those two meta super questions into super super questions or meta meta questions. Big pipe. And uh, and this went on until there was the whole group was together and we merged all of our questions into a single meta 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 question that was the group's combined wisdom as to the question to ask about the book. And we came up with a very good question. And that question was something along the lines of, what sorts of finite play make up the infinite game? And how does awareness around the finiteness of any game you happen to be playing at any given time allow you to strategize for infinite progress or play uh, and it was a good question um, and then we spent the rest of the time discussing this question as a group talking about it suggested answers but more about the question and, and, and what it could mean and, and then the final part was to record with a pair so you grab paired up again and we recorded about 20 minutes of audio using Otter, excellent transcription app, um, talking about finite and infinite games, the concepts, anything that piqued our interest, sort of. And a concept came up that I talk about a lot, which is this possibility space, this future possibility space, or the what could happen next space um, that is sort of in my conception of it, bounded by resource constraints, past actions, and imagination. So your what could happen next space is much more clearly defined in the immediate future uh, based on where you are and what you're doing and what you've got access to um, and uh, your goals and your preferences and your skills and, and whatnot. Uh, and as you move further out in time, the possibility space decoheres, it fuzzifies, and this fuzzification can be steered, though. This possibility space can be shaped. And I think what a lot of the finite, infinite game language that Kars in the book is getting at is, is kind of tools and techniques and attitudes and mindsets to employ to equip oneself to shape this what could happen next space and maximize optionality and opportunity for interesting good stuff to happen. Uh, and what came up in the recording, I was talking to a guy named Al, an older gentleman, and he was, and he was kind of caught up on, well, you know, what, what possible good futures are there? What, what could you... What could you want to be optimizing for or steering the world towards or, um, you know, how do you choose what to shape this possibility space into? Um, which struck me as a, as a completely separate issue, right? There's, there's this, this idea of the what could happen next space and your ability to shape it to a degree. And there's the question of, well, what shape do you want it to be? And that's a different thing. Um, 
So this this concept of the of the possibility space of the future bounded by imagination and and current state um, tools, techniques, mindsets, and attitudes that can equip one to uh, work to shape this possibility space, uh, and then as a completely separate but but co-determinant factor, um, you know, well, now you can shape it. What shape would you like it to be? And 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 where would you like to attempt to guide um, what could happen next? <laughs>